So this is uh, the beginning of our Three Sisters Mounds. So uh, we're planting, going to be planting corn, beans, and squash in the tradition of a lot of the Native American tribes who figured out that when you plant beans and corn and squash together, they can benefit each other because the beans give nutrients to the soil that help the other plants and the squash runs along the ground which covers up uh, any encroaching weeds because it blocks out the sun for them so it covers the ground and then the bean stalks will run up the right up the corn which is pretty neat so it's a really economical use of space we'll have three rows of corn six mounds each so each stake represents the center of a mound just want to get an early start on planning it out so then we'll be piling up mounds of uh, dirt and manure and, uh, and then uh, you start out with the corn and then once the corn gets to so you know, six inches high then you plant the beans and then a week or two later you plant uh, the, the squash so it should be pretty interesting Here we have our herb garden. The very back we have parsley gone wild. Over to the right side you see thyme. And we also have some peppers there. More thyme over here. Um, we've had some problems with bugs. Well, we do have also sweet basil. And there's some rosemary and some sage down there and some oregano. We have more peppers, we have green onions, and we have some dill. Trying to get summer squash coming in. But it's a pretty exciting development this morning. When I came in, see that. So, here's what? June 19th. Over here we have the uh, hydroponic basil growing. Shooting almost daily videos of this because it's really taking off. 
every day it gets a little bit bigger. It's my hand for comparison. Uh, over here, I believe this is spinach. Unfortunately, I didn't label it. We have some more hydroponic tomatoes over here. Uh, those were just planted in uh, these growing up a few days ago. So they're exploding. This is our larger hydroponic tomato. Obviously, we gotta do some pruning on it tomorrow. Maybe that'll be a project for the guys. Um, and I've gotta start giving it some support because it's that getting to that point. I think I'm gonna tie some ropes up there and kind of uh, tie them up as they grow up. We'll see if that works. Oh, it's in the cage. It's about to work, but cages are designed for being in the ground, so uh, that's one of the challenges. So today what we're doing is we are thinning out our tomato plants, which are growing in the hydroponic stuff, um, in the water, but I want to also propagate some of the tomatoes, so what we're doing is taping some of the clippings, and we're going to put them in these, in these we're going to fill them with water, and so the theory is they should just start to grow with water and fertilizer and then we'll take uh, a plant that's overgrowing and make it uh, better to make more of them. So we took the clippings from these tomato plants here and cleared out the bottom and stuff like that and then took off some extra suckers and then we took this, are putting the suckers into these hydroponic bins. So out of this one plant we can probably turn the whole greenhouse into a, a tomato house, so with a little bit of tomato and basil oh. in there, it would be good sauce. Again, it's June 7th, um, here we have organically grown basil, and then Swiss chard, and then we have tomato plants down there, they're starting to grow flowers, so I was shaking them a little bit to try to get them to pollinate. And down here we have more Swiss chard and more tomatoes. More tomatoes over here. Mixed results from our plantings, but I guess that's to be expected somewhat uh, from the clippings. Some of them are taking off though, so that's great. 